Daisies and Unicorns, and we are back again with uh, with another Phil and Steve edition, and we are, we you know, there's so many things that we can talk about, so many things we can explore, and so Steve, what do you, do you know what we're going to explore today? You know, Phil, I, uh, I'm, I'm coming into this. And uh, what I'm grateful for uh -huh. is this unseen power that uh, I, I trust my life with gave me ample things right. through casual observation this morning. Because, I mean, we talked about it yesterday. We're like, hey, what are we going to talk about? And we had a, a couple springboards and uh -huh. stuff like that. But, man, I, I, I got some great, great curveballs for you today. All right. Yeah. I figured you probably did. <laughs> You're and, pretty good at that. Well, and so the cool thing is, is that we've been talking for like the end of season two, episode 10. Right. And our last episode, episode one of season three, mm -hmm. just to help anybody listening for the first time understand where they're at in the Cut Daisies and Unicorns universe right now. Right. So um, with that... I want to let everybody know we were talking about doing a like go back a highlights episode. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's not happening. <laughs> right. It, that takes a little bit more work than I was thinking. I well, mean, I tried to go back through some of the episodes already and started like, I'm like, oh, like this, this is uh, this is some work. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's an undertaking. I don't know that either one of us are prepared to work that hard. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's not like. It's not like this is the job. Uh -huh. This is this is a peripheral uh, project uh -huh. that we have that that floats, and we we try to be flexible with our time on when we record. Uh, typically, it's a Thursday morning. Right. Uh, today, actually, it's Thursday afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, because we, as we've headed into, I, I understand why podcasters take the summer off. Mm -hmm. Because there's heightened activity right and um <clears throat> you know so between your travel schedule my travel schedule mm -hmm. and then the other people that we know who are traveling and their schedules as people come into chicagoland to visit and to see the sites and all that um you know it, there's a lot going on in the summer there is yeah and and it's not like you can't take care of your house mm-hmm you know, I mean, so you gotta you gotta prep prep the house, and by saying you gotta, you're doing that anyway. But right. you you want the experience for the people who are coming in to be a pleasant experience, right. and so you know the uh, wafting smells of Clorox and <laughs> um, Lysol ninety nine percent bacterial killer. Yep. You know that like gotta kill the bugs. That that being in the air is a pleasant pleasant i like the lemon fresh scent mm -hmm. personally but um uh, yeah so and then i started thinking about it i'm like and sorry kids why the hell do we ever try to plan something ahead <laughs> that's not our strength it's true so I, I i i'm just wondering in in a here i'll even i'll give everybody the animated look i'm just wondering why in the world would we even try at some level to plan plan ahead and then people are like well that's why you don't have other people to interview because you're not planning ahead far enough i'm like well then again i think we're coming back to it takes a lot of work on both sides and i think that what we may find out over the course of the podcast is that our we'll be interviewee heavy in the fall and winter months and then in the summers, it goes more towards, uh, you know, hey, it's Phil, it's Steve, <laughs> right? Having a conversation, because uh, we couldn't book anybody else either. Well, I mean, we're trying. <laughs> right. I mean, you know, and and stuff. But I, it the thing is, is that with with our schedules being so in flow, you know, kind of going, mm -hmm. it it just is one of those things where, well, then or. Or what we're saying is we're looking for a missing part of our team. Mm -hmm. And that would be the organizer scheduler. Right. That would make the phone calls, line up the people, and get everything set. That's what we do need. 
<laughs> oh, bless Excuse you. Excuse me. Oof. Wow. So, um, so I, I've just landed at, you know, I don't know, maybe it's a John Bon Jovi song, you know, just a wing and a prayer or, mm. you know. Living on a prayer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what we do. We so, <laughs> what, what do you got in your head this morning? I, a couple of weeks ago, you, you're like, my head's just rattling around. I got right. all kinds of crazy stuff going on. Yeah, I mean, and there's <laughs> there's still quite a bit of that going on, but yeah. there, at least some of it has been fleshed out. Okay. You know, I mean, all right. I mean, things planned a little bit more. There's conversations that weren't had that have now been had. And nice. So some of that is is, you know, at least kind of not right on the top of it at least yeah. you know it's not like a, like seven thousand there might be like two okay <laughs> <laughs> wow that's making some good ground right you go from seven thousand down to two uh-huh. that's like maybe two thousand oh like well it's still two k five k seven k yeah you're, uh-huh. you're down five k right. uh-huh. from seven k to two k all uh-huh. right nice. right all right well the brain is a beautiful thing yeah yeah so once you sort through it um, you, you know, we talked a little bit about last time, the, uh, paralyzation, you know, oh, factor yeah. when there's yeah. like too much and you're just like, you know what, like something's, something's bound to get dropped here. Oh. Um, so now it's time for a break and I've got to break that mentally. And so a lot of that happened too. And, and I think that it was, it's necessary and it's good. Uh, yeah. So I think that's still, you know, um. Yeah, something that had to happen, and it was good. So, so yeah, so less on my mind there. But, yeah, I think, um, you know, some of it is, you know, when we're um, music, you know, mm-hmm. you've uh, brought over some new vinyls for me to be able to yeah. to play. And yeah. that, that's, been, that's been good to be able to bring in you know, some new, uh, new sounds to the whole arena and yeah. Yeah. And, uh, picked up uh, van Weezer as I told you yeah. about before. And, and it sounds weird, but it's, it's, it's a, apparently a tribute to Eddie Van Halen once when, yeah. when he died. And, um, and so I think that they were, there's a couple of songs that are on there that are like heavy guitar riffs that is not usually what they would yeah uh do in their you know their projects yeah so it's yeah so there there's a couple of good songs that i like on there already and i'm sure that there there'll be more yeah and, yeah but, nice yeah so music's been a part of the uh the process to help me sort through the <laughs> craziness in my head all the layers <laughs> right the layers after layer after layer wow well that's good yeah. i mean it you know, thinking about music, and I, actually one of the things I was thinking about in the drive-in yeah. was I'm like, you know, maybe maybe we should sit down and write a format a little bit, gui- give us a guidance so that we're not rabbit-trailed all over the place. And, <laughs> and this is what brought me down to the part where I'm like, yeah, no, don't plan on it. You know, that, that would be just too structured for, you know, with right. where we need to go and, and what needs to happen. And uh, as that as that was taking place, um, I was like, "Well, usually people get a hello. They usually get a weather update. Then we mm-hmm. usually we hit a little cultural, um, like dynamic of what's going on, whether it's movies or music, you know, and, and, right. and stuff like that." And uh, so, I, as you were speaking of records, I believe it's is it this weekend or the next weekend is Lollapalooza? Next. Yeah, that would make sense because I think the following weekend after that is Hinterland. Right. And I haven't checked and crossed the performers on how many people at Lollapalooza are going to end up landing at Hinterland. Both, yeah. I don't um, That's a good question. But yeah, I'm and then uh in Winnetka, they have a it used to be a 2-day festival. But now uh, this year it's going to be a one-day festival, and it's going to be out at the ball fields, and I don't know they're calling it the like the recreation complex or whatever, and and stuff like that. But that's a one day or, um, and quite frankly, there like there was an artist like maybe one out of the whole lineup that I'd be like, oh, I you know wouldn't mind hearing them, but 
I mean, it's far enough down the road. I think it's like September. Oh, it's actually on September 11th. Oh. Yeah, a Saturday. Okay. Uh, if everybody wants kind of a, to, to pin where in 2021 we are, um, it'll be Saturday, uh, September 11th hmm. is when, when that festival is going to go on. Um, I did see drive-by truckers <laughs> are going to be playing in Ankeny. I just, well, they're coming here too. Well, that doesn't surprise Right. I, whenever I hear bands that I've listened to in the past coming to Chicago, I'm never surprised. Right. I'm like, you know what? If, um, based on the, the move of my body to this area, uh, to live, right. I'm like, I'm like, oh man, you'd never see that person in Des Moines or it would be a long time in between trips of, of the person landing, you know, in Des Moines and stuff like that. But yeah. I was shocked because Randy Burke and the prisoners are opening up for drive by truckers in Ankeny. Huh. Um, and I, I'm like, Whoa, that's, that's kind of crazy and awesome for Randy and, right. uh, and that whole crew. And so, um, but yeah, I, people are getting out and they're getting out. And now the question is how are people making the transition? from so much solitude right into the the public you know um mentioned <clears throat> we took a trip to seattle you know and we went down to the farmer's market and uh it it was crazy yeah like so many people and so so many people that were so close together and there weren't any masks <laughs> and the, you know and i i'm like when's the last time somebody listened to NPR. Right. You know, cause I mean, they're talking about the Delta variant. They're talking about the, the, the transmission is greater, you know, and Hey, and I, I'm not irritated today. <laughs> I am so not irritated today. I, I feel, feel great. Uh -huh. feel in a good head space. And so I'm not going to go down any of the, but you know, and it, I mean, it was one of those things that, within Amy and I, it was just noticeable that we just weren't used to it. Right. And so we, we did. And I, oops, sorry there. My, I'm waving my arms and my arms hit the phone. You're very animated. <laughs> it, it's so true. I right. just, I move my hands when I'm talking. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad that the bands get to get out there. You know, I mean, the big bands are always going to make money because they've got royalties but yeah. some of the smaller level or mid level, like they're going to make their money off of shows like these. And I'm glad that they get to do it again. Yeah. Because some of the virtual ones, I mean, yeah, you're not going to, you're not going to get the, the merch, you know, you're not going to get all the other fees that are, you know, that are going to yeah. be part of the, the livelihood of these bands. And so I think it's, I think it's really great that they get to come back again to be able to say, we're going to perform and, perform live and hopefully there's nothing in the fall that's gonna stop them from being able to do that yeah well i know a lot of a lot of musicians a lot of performers have been waiting for the better weather and um you know and, and to be able to get outdoors and i mean and hey you know cool with the cdc to be able to break it down to you know based on you know, I, I'm planning on, you know, getting in and out with a mask at Hinterland and I'm planning on, you know, um, you know, sp spreading out, getting away from, I'm, I'm not going to be in the mosh pit. <laughs> right. I'm not going to work real hard to get up real close. Uh -huh. Um, I, I personally have never like, well, I mean, there's been times when I've pushed up front, but for me, like the experience is more like in my ears and in my body. And, right. and so, you know, it, it, it just one. and Hey, I'm not, this isn't a judging zone. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying that's just not my deal. So yeah. I'll have and if you are, make sure you come with your little earplugs cause you want to take care of your ears. Oh Yeah. <laughs> 
your eardrums especially it 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 doesn't speak to like oh if i'm wearing eardrums it means that the music's bad it's that has nothing to do with it it's just trying to protect earplugs right those earplugs yeah 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 right. you said eardrums oh so you if you're it. if you're wearing eardrums <laughs> well <laughs> right that's true hopefully you don't wear them but you yeah. keep them yeah you got to keep them safe <laughs> right yeah i haven't always done that auditory so. health is what we're talking about right, right now yeah and there's I remember a couple of eighty thirty five shows. We we did move up a little bit. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, a lot of times we sat back. Yeah, we waited. There were yeah. That's that's why I stuttered in the middle of that because I was going back through and you know there there have been times that you know to get up close has happened in my life. Yeah. I know that's true. Mm-hmm. But that's that's the part we're bringing up is that how how you know how how have we changed? Because I know that that won't be me, you know, for for that. And so yeah, but looking forward to that. And um, of course, you know, heading heading back to the Des Moines area, and then you plop us down in the middle of a amphitheater, and mm-hmm. there's going to be lots of people to catch up with. Sure. Yeah. So, it'll be good. Yeah. Yep. Gypsy the dog's making the trip with us. <laughs> she's gonna. Go, she hasn't been back in a while either, right? She's gonna go see grandma. Hmm. Yep. Um. Yeah, it's been a while. March, hmm. I think, is when we made that last trip. Yeah. So she'll have some smells to smell and. Oh yeah. See if there's. Well, <laughs> familiarity with it. Grandma, grandma's got chickens. Uh, in her neighbor's backyard. Uh oh. <laughs> and then th- this little bulldog, yeah. in that barks and is a crazy dog. But it's okay. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll navigate that. It'll be it'll be fine. Yeah. You know, and so we're in. Yeah. So, um, lots lots happening in the music scene with live music. Mm-hmm. And uh, people being able to experience the arts, and so that that's that's a good thing. Yeah, um, Julie from Des Moines. Yeah, she reached out and said, "Hey, I'm coming out there for the Guns and Roses concert at Wrigley. I'm going to stay with you." <laughs> okay, nice. So we're going to go see <laughs> Guns and Roses at Wrigley with with Julie. Oh wow! Yeah, so that'll be an experience. Yeah. I mean, and you know what? Again, me personally, I would buy the DVD. <laughs> right. Watch it in my studio. Uh-huh. I remember walking into Wrigley for U2. And no, that was Soldier Field. Oh, that was Soldier Field, not well, Wrigley. because you were in your haze. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so true. Oh, Jet my lag. Yeah. So... Yeah, jet lag from the trip back from mm-hmm. Hong Kong. Oh my gosh. Yeah, but still, I mean, like all the people walking into that place, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that um, that was... Wrigley's a little bit smaller than Soldier Field, so okay. Wrigley's about forty two thousand. You can fit on a regular. So what they do with a Wrigley Field concert is so that back the um, the outfield center field is where they set up the stage, and then they do general admission, okay. and then it's like you know um, seats based even sitting through that uh, like the infield all the way up to the outer. So they they can pack a little bit more in there than the forty thousand. But uh, yeah, so wow. It's, I went. I saw Pearl Jam at at uh, Wrigley, and I saw parts of Foo Fighters. <laughs> <laughs> so, parts, parts. Well, <laughs> it's because the um, uh, we had popped in there, <laughs> and it was like they uh, at a certain point they did open the gate. So, <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, wow! Yeah. And and that was Foo Fighters. So you, you you're saying to Dave, "Hey, I'm sorry, right? But I got to see parts of you for free." Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now that would make an interesting story. I know. <laughs> How many parts of you have I seen for free? 
<laughs> so many parts. Yeah. So yeah, the experiences. I mean, the the Wrigley shows are pretty fun. I mean, seeing like because Eddie Vedder's a huge a Cubs fan. Okay. Um, and so he loves to come back, and he loved. You know, I think that was the year. I think it was 2016 when the Cubs were with at the end of that year would have you know they won the the, the championship. Okay, all right. So so wow. it was like we saw him in the fall, I believe. Then you know it was that next. That, yeah. No, maybe it was like that they were entering. Yeah, because that would have been it. Okay, they were entering into playoff season. So. Okay, wow. So they set up that field. Do they lay like a tarp over the grass and then put yeah. chairs on the tarp? Mm-hmm. Oh wow! Yeah, because they yeah like that would that would cause some disruption. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would think, and right. you know that's that was the thing too. Is I mean, we didn't really even realize that at Soldier Field, like there was a general admission that was on the main level right i mean and people are just packed in Mm -hmm. i'm like standing for all of joshua tree holy cow right (laughs) i could not have done that i just i maybe maybe that's the old man season that i'm in Mm -hmm. i would just if i'm listening to music i would prefer to have my butt in a chair Mm -hmm. and no one standing in front of me yeah i would uh at least prefer there to be a seat to sit in like yeah. you have the option like yeah. sometimes i'd like to stand all right you know stretch well, it's, it out it, and... it's it's hard to dance when you're sitting <laughs> it's true yeah and since right. you know i mean well i mean videos can go viral and everybody has one on their phone you know so f- um i'll just be careful that when i dance i dance in the dark <laughs> <laughs> no spotlights, please. <laughs> this is not for filming. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I've been. T- yeah, we've we've been over this before. Uh huh. Yeah, we have. You're like, hey, uh, which episode is that in? I'm I'm not even going to tell you. Just just know. Yeah. This white boy don't dance. It it came right at the top. Yeah. You wanted to make a promise, and you did. <laughs> <laughs> and so far. So it's been carried out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so music. Yeah. yeah. So on my drive in, um, I stood in amazement. Um, if I had a gold badge with a blue ribbon, mm-hmm. I would have given it to this gentleman. Hmm. He was riding a bicycle. You and I were actually reminiscing about navigating through the summer in Chicago. Yeah. And not to get all done with uh, our present day Mm -hmm. and be mindful of, um, you know, living in the future. But we we realize we're getting ready to turn a corner and head into fall. Yeah. Ish. I mean, by the time we get done with July, we'll we'll be into... Mm -hmm. I don't... Do you class? Do you classify? Yeah, that school school. comes back in mid-August. So that that's fall, Mm -hmm. August, September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get a little Indian summer happening along the way. I don't even know if it's politically correct to say that anymore, but you know, probably not. But who who knows? Well, I didn't mean any harm by it. (laughs) Um, Actually, I think Indian people are beautiful. And that is a reflection of that said season. It's, you know, when it gets kind of cold out, but then the sun mm-hmm. comes up and you've got beautiful golden rays. And yeah, it's so. I like fall. If it's, if it's offensive, <laughs> I apologize to all indigenous people. Right. Um, <clears throat> but. No need to cancel Steve <laughs> or, or the Cut Daisies and Unicorns podcast. Yeah. <laughs> no need. No need. Um, we'll fight for you. That's that's our new uh, that's our a, a new hashtag mm. trend. Hashtag no need. No need. <laughs> but I saw this guy in a, on a yeah. bicycle. Yeah. And so yeah. we were we were talking about dips chairs yesterday, which is going to be in the middle of the winter. But um, mm-hmm. but I saw this guy in a bicycle, and he was brilliant. Dude's carrying a tire pump with him in his backpack, like a. 
bicycle tire pump. Like a bicycle, like a hand. Yeah. T. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So he's resourceful because chances are if you're riding your bike enough, you're going to find yourself possibly having a flat. Well, or that, needing air. That that's one of the things that, like, I've never considered riding a bicycle in Chicago. Mm-hmm. It has never come to the top of my idea list. Mm-hmm. I probably have a really short idea list when it comes to <laughs> <laughs> to things like that. <laughs> but I'm telling you. Riding a bicycle. Yeah. Now there's bicycle lanes. Right. And there's people who love to ride bikes. Right. In our neighborhood, we have bicycle like packs, like they're bicycle gangs. There's oh. an age, age group of of children that are, get together anywhere from I, I I think you're a gang after you have six members <laughs> up to fifteen. <laughs> Like when I go to pull out of the driveway, I have to look both ways because the gang might be coming, and and they fly. <laughs> I mean, like they're they're going, and and then and then there's the geriatric ah. bicycle gang of thirty five to forty, yeah, people with gray hairs. Mm-hmm. You know, now again, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the st- I don't have anything against old people or people with gray hair, right? I mean, look. <laughs> Look at this face. Right. Let me let me give you a clearer shot. Right there. Zoom that in. Look at this face. Right. Gray hair. I do I consider myself geriatric? I consider myself I have geriatric moments. When you got a stretch to be able to put on your shoes. <laughs> you might be geriatric. <laughs> I'm telling you. And, and like, I've actually considered, like, one of the things my doctor wants me to do is start Pilates. Well, Mm -hmm. I haven't started it yet. Right. Well, we've been talking about that for a while. It was April. And, 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 annual appointment April. Uh Yeah. Yeah. Uh And so, but man, I noticed, oh, pops and stretches and, Uh you know, got to do that and do this and, you know, and a couple floor touches and, oh my gosh. So, but I mean, they're literally twice a week when I'm driving to the studio, mm-hmm. I run into the geriatric bike game. <laughs> so then we got the, we, we got the little minis or, uh-huh. you know, like probably elementary age, you know, well, obviously it's pre before they get their driver's license. Mm-hmm. They're on bicycles. We got those gangs. Then we got the geriatric club. Then we have all of the people who are like in their prime, and this is one of the ways that they take care of themselves is to, to that's cycle. That's their exercise. Yeah, that's their exercise. And then you come into Chicago, mm. and it's a specific mode of transportation. It is. Yeah. There are so people. it's no longer just for exercise. It's no longer just for enjoyment or no. but it's it's definitely a mode of transportation yeah mm-hmm. now i will say the bike traffic mm-hmm. gets around sometimes faster than the car traffic oh yeah yeah i think that there there's been some uh there's been some i don't know, races of sorts saying we're trying to figure out during high traffic times what's actually faster is it the car? Is it a bike? And uh, yeah, so those definitely. Yeah, I mean, so I think uh, uh, the uh, the buses, yeah, are really slow at those times. Oh yeah, because then you're a bus sitting in this traffic, and when you have to pull over, man, cars are filling in that space quick. Yeah. And so then the bus gets behind and those times they have to have a high, you know, flow of of buses in order to try to keep some semblance of of a schedule. But yeah. That takes us back to Ted uh not Ted Nugent, John Nugent's uh interview. We were talking about the CTA. Right. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, we were. Yeah. <laughs> it, it it it's one of those things where Yeah. I I had a motorcycle once. Mm-hmm. Well, I've actually had three motorcycles in my lifetime. Yeah. 
One my grandfather gave to me. Hmm. Little Honda, red. Man, I tore up the yard with that. It it, it, it was a <laughs> lot of fun. Some donuts. Oh, donuts and circles and yeah, yeah. That yeah. was that was fun. And um, <clears throat> and then when I was living in Beaverdale, mm-hmm. I actually looked into buying one because the traffic in that area right. was easy enough that I thought, oh, having like a little scooter. Mm -hmm. you know, kind of thing. Um, But then I bought a Yamaha when I lived in Britt, Iowa. And that was cool, but I ended up finding out that the forks were bent and it was unsafe. So I sold that off. And that was about the time Michaela was born. Mm -hmm. So now now Jeopardy takes place. You know, like, are you really going to be on a motorcycle and go (laughs) splat? And then I had one when I lived in West Des Moines. Actually, you probably knew me with, during that time. I think I did. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'd wear a helmet. Mm-hmm. And the weirdest thing in the world is uh, Gray Lovelace actually inspired me that he would come to rehearsals and practice mm-hmm. um, wearing his guitar strapped to his back on his motorcycle. Hmm. Yeah. I... But it was just back and forth with the guitar and in West Des Moines traffic and right. Des Moines traffic, I, j- I didn't even feel safe in that. Right. I can't imagine being on <laughs> What a, it would be here. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. I will say that, again, in casual observation, there are not a lot of motorcycles that, um, that drive right. n- 94. No. Not very much. I mean, I, I may have seen, like in the last 11 months, maybe five motorcycles over that time. Yeah, you definitely see more bicycles than motorcycles. Well, and I'm talking about the freeway highway, mm-hmm. but then like I don't see bicycles there. But no, oh, bicycles yeah. bicycles in not town. Not allowed oh. on the freeway. <laughs> oh. oh, is that the deal? Yeah. They're not allowed. Uh-uh. That's why I don't see very many of them. Uh-huh. Now, see, this is why we talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you'll see them on the roads. You just can't be on the freeway. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, because there's no way for them to keep up with the flow of traffic. Oh, my gosh. So... Yeah, they would they would be murdered. I mm-hmm. I literally saw a murderer today. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was um I'm not sure make and model. It was red. But I saw a car come on the on ramp mm-hmm. and literally do a move straight across three lanes. And it was like <laughs> it it wasn't like I'm moving, then I'm moving, and it looks like a diagonal. Yeah. Their move was in perfect harmony with the flow, and it looked like they just made a straight line across. Wow. At 75 to 80 miles an hour. That's a that's an intricate move. It's but it was it was <laughs> weird. It was like a size of a caravan or like a, oh, so. a like I mean it was a larger vehicle. Like yeah. it wasn't a, some rice burner, or, uh-huh. you know, you know, zip, 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 zip. You see that right. happening. Uh-huh. It wasn't. It wasn't a Benz. It wasn't, you know, a BMW or whatever. Because oftentimes they like to show everyone sure. that that's how fast the, they are and how yeah mm-hmm. intricate they can be. Yeah, yeah. So you wouldn't even. I mean, like, so would you take a bike like Lakeshore Drive, kind of, you know, where those lanes are actually built for bikes that are off of traffic? I mean, but you know, it would scare me there. Hmm. The people who really bike, hmm. bicyclists or cyclists that are the skilled ones. Is yeah, that, yeah, yeah, like the pros. Mm-hmm. So you'd be afraid that they would run me over, run you down. Yeah. Hmm. Or well, run, I mean, run you off. Yeah, I mean, you know, and and there's the the uh, potential courtesy to the left, to the left. You know, if you've uh, been on walking trails and bicyclists come al- along, there, you know, there's there's common cultural courtesies, you know, in all that. But man, I tell you what, I I'm more of a saunterer, hmm. sauntering, and so <laughs> usually people are moving faster. Yeah. Then I like to go, uh-huh. but I believe that heightens my ability to observe. I think it does. If you're taking your time and you're saying, "I'm just looking around," I'm 
paying attention to my surroundings. You're not trying to move faster than fast. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think it gives you more observation power. And, you know, when you're going to channel something, uh, channeling the, uh, the power of observation is like, I, I, I like that as a superpower. Right. Yeah. Gets me good places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Again, if I had a gold medallion with a blue ribbon, I would give the bicyclist with the tire pump that, that ribbon today. Hmm. And if I was in a really big hurry, I wouldn't have seen the dude. <laughs> right. He, he, he'd just been some other face on, on a bicycle. Uh-huh. Yeah. And so... All right. Yeah. Gold stars. Yeah, that's just... Well, you know... Handing it, out medals. It's an Olympic theme. Mm-hmm. You know, we're... Heading. Yeah, I think opening tomorrow, right? I, I think so. Which I think it's going to be anticlimactic. I mean, I'm not a huge... I mean, I guess I don't know if I need... It. I don't know if it's anti-American to say I don't really... I'm not a huge Olympic guy. Well, Olympics are international, right? Um, universal. Yeah. Um, I so I don't think that makes you anti-American. All right. I mean, I I don't mind picking up. You know, if there's something on, I'll watch it. I mean, I like I like volleyball when it's on. I like swimming. Everyone. I mean, gymnastics are going to be on. The, I mean, so I don't mind picking those up. But how do you feel about twenty six go people running in a circle <laughs> for? Like track and field? <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking the two-mile race. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, when we're talking about, like, or, yeah. I mean, there's, it's it's interesting. I, yeah. I think what you're saying, though, is that you are enough anti-nationalism <laughs> that you're not going to use the Olympics to stir you up. Right. Hey, did you realize that uh, Hitler was the first person to institute the the flame? being lit yeah i think you brought that up i did i think it was on one of our other shows i was at the nationalism show i, I think it yeah, was yeah. i yeah. think you brought in that fact i didn't know before that yeah but then you brought it up and now i know it yeah <laughs> yeah so the olympics are happening people watch the olympics i i think that what i give to general general population um as far as people who are um really in tune with the olympics is there is a sense of awe mm. that people can actually do these feats. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I I I uh, find that these people are so finely tuned. I mean, they they spend their almost entire lives right with everything here surrounding it. Like, I I understand the dedication that goes into. I mean, I'm I I cool love that. Um, about I, them yeah i wouldn't want to do like yeah. i wouldn't want all of that to consume my life so much that there's absolutely nothing else besides it 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 gives me the pause and question for what drives people at that level like i i, I can't identify with it Mm-mm. it's probably why i w- didn't become more than a rhythm guitarist because <laughs> Hold it. Wait. Are we talking about practice now? <laughs> well, that's that's what, you know, when you're looking at it, I mean, these these people have gone through grueling amounts of of training, practice all for I mean, yeah, there were competitions too, but when you're looking at the bulk of it, it's all waking up early doing this stuff for like hours and hours every single day. I mean, like that is a level of commitment and perseverance that I'm yeah. like, I, there are a limited few. Well, and it's one of those things where like when it comes to, so I played sports growing up mm-hmm. um, and we've, we've had the sports conversation before, but you know, it, I just, I'm not even sure, like when I, when I, I'm so far removed from that time Mm -hmm. that I don't remember the drive. I like, I, it's hard for me to identify that kind of drive, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I would agree with you too. I mean, I, 
I think that there probably was a time. I mean, I played soccer, you know, yeah. I think for most of my life. I mean, from like five years old up until like, I think in college I was just doing um, intramural you know, soccer, but yeah, but you still enjoyed the game. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I don't think I've even played since then other than, I mean, I've probably messed around with the soccer ball, like or what, it, but other than that, I haven't, I haven't tried to be competitive Yeah, in that arena, whether it was soccer, then I picked up basketball and I say that I played baseball, but really, I mean, <laughs> baseball was not, yeah, was not my sport to play. I, I like to watch it. I like yeah, to be involved, do. but I don't now. Yeah, I, I would. I would never have called myself a baseball player. <laughs> yeah, I, and I didn't have enough commitment in the whole game to be able to say, I'm. I'm not going to be good at baseball. But it was a placeholder till the other sports that I did like came around. Yeah. Yeah, it's sports. Sports Sport, ball. Sports ball. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Got anything in your head? No. Okay. <laughs> well, then <laughs> it's like it's like absent up here now. I don't it's need. Like, it's like, hey. I mean, I always have something to say, but I don't always have the topics to start it. <laughs> so where I'm going to go next is I'm going to give everybody a good look at this book. There we go. And uh, this is this book is called The Universal Christ by Father Richard Rohr. And we have had the opportunity to speak of Richard Rohr in the past. Mm -hmm. For those who are close friends and family, they've heard me pontificate about how... I mean, I would say that Richard Rohr probably has been the major influence of shifting how I think in the last three and a half to four years, because that's as long as I've known about him. Yeah. Um, but I want you to know, I've, I, I've only gotten shortly into it. So I'm, I'm, I'm not at the end of it. And his, um, speaking of you too, Bono says, I cannot put this book down. Hmm. So, um, but his... So Bono is also a Rorian? Oh, I, that doesn't <laughs> surprise me at all. Right. Um, I, I would actually say that probably Bono um, would call up, put a call into Richard Rohr and be like, Hey, I need an hour with you. Help fix me, kind of thing. <laughs> help fix me. Um, help, help, help me understand at a level that I've never understood at before. Um, but he also says in his own words that um, the divine dance is a prequel to the universal Christ. What I will let you know about the Divine Dance is that the Divine Dance is, and, and this brought me back to our conversation, you walking me off the, off the ledge last week, mm -hmm. is that um, the Divine Dance speaks into community. And it, it's, it was the largest shift in me in finally being able to recognize dualism. Mm -hmm. And being able to do it from an observation standpoint. And so, but I'm telling you folks, the Divine Dance, my head is used to reading theology books. My head is used to parsing through religiosity. My head's used to it. That was a tough read. So don't think you're going to pick that book up and in a weekend you're going to get through it. And be, Like, I literally mm. had to let my head change in how I was thinking as I as I work through that book and there would be times that when I'd set it down and I'd pick it back up on that page I'm like yeah I'm gonna flip back three pages and start at this header because I really wasn't catching exactly what he was laying down with this whole thing yeah 
I've and read that, books like that too. So you yeah. know, and so like as far as personal challenge and change and growth and stuff like that, oh my gosh, so worth the work. But we're we're definitely not talking. You're not binging this on Netflix, <laughs> and it, it it is not a book of pleasure for you to be able to read through and say, oh yeah, I really enjoyed that. You know, mm-hmm. that's cool. Um, now to know that it's a prelude or it's the book for before that that is made and written to give context to there are some similar and this is very familiar with Rohr's writing there are similar languages being spoken here as far as threads and and things that are brought out mm-hmm. and i found that in in many of his writings um cuz you know he's probably written more books in the last 10 years than he did for the last for the 70 years before it. Hmm. And so um, in him giving himself to this, I, I will just say that uh, Roar, yeah, it's good work, it's good self-work, and it's, it's, it's worth the read. Um, what popped off the page for me in this that I, I had mentioned um, is he has what he calls a transformative worldview. And I've never heard it, I've never heard worldview ap- approached in that way. Transformative worldview? A, a transformative worldview. Mm-hmm. And, and so, um, and, and for people, if, you, if you're intrigued and you're like, Huh, I wonder what this is all about. I'm like, this guy's gonna, like, he, he's gonna set some landmines that are gonna blow you off your seat on a couple different things. Mm-hmm. And let me give you two main words uh, that will help you discern whether or not you really wanna enter into how much do I want my faith structure blown up? Mm-hmm. I mean, and I, you know, it's just fair warning, but. Phil, based on your knowledge, what is pantheism? Pantheism would be God is in all and God is all. And so... So you're looking at the tree is God, a flower is God, a the grass is God. And pantheism would believe mm-hmm. not only are those things God but they're separately God. Right. That That is the major, major distinguisher between pantheism and my next word. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, raven. By the way, in Seattle, so many blackbirds, <laughs> so many ravens, so many crows. I They had the call of a crow, yeah. so I think they were a crow, but um, large black beings of feathers nice. oh it was fantastic <laughs> ah my gosh i kept kept looking um daisy i didn't find any unicorns oh man i was teasing phil in a text message that i was going to go look for bigfoot <laughs> that didn't happen either do you like how i sidetracked here pantheism <laughs> pantheism pantheism would say that even in the plastic of what this bird is made of that it is made of God, and it is its own God. Right. So, if I wanted to say a prayer to the to the blackbird here, the blackbird and its godness would hear me. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's pantheism. Panentheism is not the same thing. Panentheism. Yeah, look it up on your computer. All right. All right, and we're gonna we're gonna use your voice to help my drone break up this conversation that we're having in regards to the universal Christ. So pan n theism. Mm-hmm. Read the read the definition there. Uh, let's see. Classical theistic systems often prioritize the difference between God and the world, while panentheism stresses God's active presence in the world and the world's influence upon God. 
While pantheism emphasizes God's presence in the world, panentheism maintains the identity and significance of the non-divine. So pantheism, God is everything. Yes. Panentheism, God is present. In everything. In everything. And it doesn't take away from the individuality of what the thing is. Right. And then they talk about the maintaining the identity and significance of the non-divine. So there is something that then would be non-divine, which I'm assuming that would be more in the studying of whatever. Western mysticism um, includes panentheism, which is where I would assume Father Richard Rohr would be in that mystic realm of, uh, of yes. understanding panentheism. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of evangelicals mm -hmm. um, would say that that is too new age, um, that it's a new age thought process. The universal Christ makes the case for that the Christ is not Jesus' last name. Mm. But that Jesus, if you believe that Jesus is God, Jesus is the bodily manifestation of the Christ that has existed forever. So when you look at uh, the sacred text concerning creation, and it speaks of God in the plural, we would recognize that Jesus was present, or the Christ was present at creation. Jesus was not. Jesus was born... First century? Right. Mm -hmm. there, there was no physical body of the Christ... There was no there. There was no human manifestation of the Christ mm -hmm. before Jesus was born. Now, you're you're getting the Coble version of this, right? All right. I mean, it's a quick breakdown. I mean, that's that's what, that's what I'm that's saying. What the there, the, mm -hmm. There's there's so much more. But where I'm going to go with this is in redemptive theology. A a lot of people would say that the reason that Jesus came was so that he could take away our sins so God could love us. Mm -hmm. But that's not what Scripture teaches. Scripture teaches while we were yet sinners, Christ, Christ. Christ <laughs> died for us. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, in, in our sin, we, were, we are already loved by God. Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea is that the, the human manifestation of the Christ in Jesus is an outward showing of God so that we could be able to see what was unseen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change the consistent thought or the consistent heart of God which again, a lot of our faith structures are based off of Greek mythology where God is this, and I'll, I'll do this again for effect. God is this gray bearded, <laughs> all powerful lightning bolt ready to strike because you're a sinner. Right. And that's, that's not God. And, and so roar, roar moves in this way. And so I, I, I just bring it, Bring it up that if you're like, Steve, you're talking weird, and, well, find out more. You know, read, read about it, take a look at it, think about these things. Um, but it does come with full, ex um, full disclosure. Richard Rohr is a Franciscan priest. Mm -hmm. Do some study about St. Francis. I mean, literally, he, he would talk to chipmunks and birds and, you know, seeing that in this creation, what holds all of creation together mm -hmm. isn't the law of nature. It is God. 
And then there's where, when you move into salvation, damnation, and and eternal life, Rora comes back, and, and the major distinction that people get hung up on is like, well, how can how can the Christ be in you, but you not be saved? Versus there was a redemption that was made. And, and so then that's where the teachings of Rora move into a place that, like, there's just sometimes I just don't get what he's saying. Mm-hmm. But we also have those hard texts. You know, there, there's, there's a text about that we need to work out our salvation. With fear and trembling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, how, how can you have that? Mm-hmm. But, you, but And how can you have the security of the believer? In that by faith and through that belief, mm-hmm. then you're saved, once saved, always saved. Well, it, we come back to... And you and I have talked about this. If we're if we're placing the work of salvation on a faith decision, that work then has moved any redemptive work off of the cross and put it on ourselves. Nice. That's 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 work work based theology of of salvation, and I I can't line up with that. Right. So I'm I'm continuing to discover what I can line up with. Yeah. So I was pulling up a couple of quotes from the Universal Christ and. This one was controlling people try to control people. <laughs> and they do the same with God. But loving anything always means a certain giving up of control. Mm. You tend to create a God who is just like you, whereas it was supposed to be the other way around. So just, I mean, that's that's a, a deep thought. All, I mean, just a just a piece, a slice. Yeah. Say, I mean, because we're we tend to be controlling people, whether or not we manifest that in all of our relationships, but we t- we tend to be controlling people. Yeah. And so, we, Father Roar saying, if you're a controlling people, we try to control everything, even the aspect of divinity. Yeah. And so we're trying to control what God looks like, what how God's going to act, what God's going to do, and we don't give God the freedom, the divine, the freedom right. to be. Yeah. And then reflect as we would, you know, in God in us instead of just saying, no, we want to... We want to be able to define what that picture looks like. Yeah. And why? Because we love control. I love that. Is, I love it, that piece. See? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. And there's so, and those are the nuggets that that even if you don't agree with it, I, I would say read it for the sake of knowing that you, you, you're probably not going to agree 100%. You know what? That's the perfect exercise of moving, transcending the dualistic mind of your own mind to say, you know what? Here's a safe place. There's a safe place you can go to that you'll know that you won't agree with everything. And it's not about that. And quite frankly, Roar doesn't care. Mm -hmm. You know, one of my favorite... I don't think his goal is trying to get you to be on his page. (laughs) No, no. He's just saying, hey, and and, I mean, and this dude has... (laughs) You know, lived at the monastery, given himself over to study, has been in contemplation and pondering. He has more hours into that than I have left to live. Mm-hmm. And and so, you know, it, it, it's a great opportunity to be able to say, hey, you know what? Here's a book. I know I won't agree with everything. So the exercise will be navigate through the book and Pick up the things that you can agree with. Pick up, look into the wisdom that's being shared, and and that's that's my plug for the day. I, and actually, it was in that um, transformative worldview that um, he brings up restoration. Yeah, and it's in restorative justice that we were tripping over in our conversation. That I'm like. Dude, I don't even know if we can have a conversation about restorative justice because when you go to the end line of what restorative justice looks like, I don't know that there are enough people on this planet or in this country or in this city that can... I mm-hmm. Usually, the non-restorative process is to penalize 
and to bring hurt and right. like yeah and so anyway you gotta that, make it hurt in order to make it stick and i <laughs> you know yeah and i think that that uh you know is something that we've we've talked about as far as what does restoration look like so restore right and then to bring about what was once there and so when you're talking about all of the um you know when people love to go out and get restored furniture they're like it was once something and it maybe just was unloved or uncared for and then they're going to do something to it we're going to sand it down we're going to paint it we're going to what we're trying to bring the true identity of it out again Mm, yeah and i think that that's that already i mean when we're looking at yes um, in, and more especially restorative justice, meaning into the criminal justice system. How do we bring somebody's true identity back out? Because maybe they were identified and pigeonholed as criminals from an early age because they didn't have structure or they didn't have this or they didn't have that. And they went down a path. How can we find their true identity and try to bring that out. Maybe they don't even know what it is yet. And I think that the criminal justice system can then start to take shape and form differently when we have a goal of bringing somebody's true self out. And, and to me, I think that why wouldn't we try to shoot for that instead of saying, you know, we believe punitive justice, punitive justice says we're going to punish the hell out of them literally we're, we're going to punish them until they don't want to be bad anymore well let's see how that's worked out for us <laughs> right let's see so we have a system that has a recidivism rate meaning that repeat offenders continue to be back and circulate throughout the system why because we're not trying to be able to restore them. We're not trying to be able to bring anything good. We're just trying to say what you did was bad and we want you to be good. Right. Well, if all they're taught is bad and everything that's bad, I mean, like how, how is, how are we trying to restore? Oh, let's put a library in the prison system. So at least when they're in prison, they can read a book. Now, I'm saying there are, yes, stories that come out and people have gotten law degrees while they're in prison and other degrees while they're in prison. And there's good, there's been some good stories and some good products, byproducts of some of the stuff that they've done. But overall, when we're looking at a system and we're saying, are we trying to actually restore people and actually bring bring about something that's going to be healthy or are we just trying to perpetuate a system that actually brings the state funds um the prison system yeah is one that can be a a benefit yeah and so they have been taught over time that we're going to punish because that's going to actually be good for us to you know continue this pipeline yeah and i think there there is there is a an episode Mm -hmm. that we kind of touch on that in regards to capitalism privatization i think i think it was in one of our black lives matter episodes um that that we kind of touched on it we we dipped our toe in it Mm -hmm. we didn't really go there fully um what how i want to turn this conversation on richard Rohr, pantheism pantheism and a restoration or a restorative worldview, mm-hmm. okay, is I'm going to go to sacred text, mm-hmm. and I'm this. This is a big question that all of the listeners need to be able to ask themselves. And you brought it up, talking about the criminal. Mm-hmm. If we're supposed to restore, they may be they may not have ever known who they are, really. I'm asking the listener, do you even know 
who you really are. Yeah. And and this may get into mystery. It it may get into some like you're like, "Whoa, dude, that's a really heavy question. I can't answer that in 30 seconds." And 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 I will be like, "Oh, wow, your first step towards enlightenment." <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is yes this is a life long process right. it's a journey of pursuit yeah and so i go to the sacred text um and in first corinthians chapter 13 known as the love, love chapter. chapter all right but at the end verse 8 love never ends as for prophecies they will pass away as for tongues they will cease and as for knowledge it will pass away for we know in part and we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. Verse 11, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. Verse 12, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then shall, then I shall know fully let me start that sentence all over again now i know in part mm -hmm. then i shall know fully even as i have been fully known mm -hmm. there is a dim glass and it's it's the perception of ourselves through life go back to the roar quote on control Mm -hmm. in moving in control when we try to control God to become our image this turns and the first part of this meditation mm -hmm. is to come before God and say hey God you already fully know me mm -hmm. can you bring light can you shed some light? Can you wipe a little dirt off the glass? <laughs> Can you help me know mm -hmm. me as you know me? Mm -hmm. And so take some time, folks, to just come in front of a divine being and say, I'm looking forward to the adventure. Help me learn what you've made me to become. Mm. And quite frankly, I don't I don't care what name of God you put on it. And people are like, that's heresy. No, no. It's it's taking the lines of the box and pushing it out to invite you into discovery. That's all I'm doing. That's all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I, certainly, you would have to know from our words today, I'm not afraid to say the name. Actually, if you listen two times when I speak the name of Jesus or the Christ, I, ever since I read the Divine Dance, I've moved into, typically, I don't say Jesus Christ. I'll call Jesus the Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, And, and if, you, if you start looking through the sacred texts, in the Pauline epistles, you'll find out how often that the teachings and the writings don't focus on the human, the humanity, and that's the purpose of the way it's written. Mm -hmm. It focuses on the divinity in the Christ. So anyway, my rant's yeah. over. That's all I no, got. I think it's a good call for identity. Yeah. I mean, and knowing who you are. Yeah. I mean, because if we're talking about restorative and you said... How can we know what to restore if we don't know what we were or and what then, we are? And then we get worked up about the criminal mm -hmm. who's being a bad person mm -hmm. caught in a system that is meant to perpetuate a continued system for capitalism. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, maybe the world gets to be a better place when we look in the dim mirror and we ask God to show us who we are mm -hmm. and, and, and you know to reveal what we've been made to be. And then we step into what has been spoken into us instead of coming to the table of community mm -hmm. and saying, 
this is what I believe how this will be pretty and how it looks the best and how it's going to work the best. Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's a good call. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And in, you know, you, you, you and I both believe uh, in the power of confession mm -hmm. um, and how that there is so much strength in ba basically it's you lay down your ego and you say, hey, this is this is where I'm at and it's not right. And or these are the words that I spoke. And, you know, I I didn't think that I spoke it harshly, but it came, you know, it, you know, I can see that how we're interacting together, that it was harsh, you know, but the power of confession I, then can come into, again, what, what is happening? If I believe through panentheism that the Christ is within you, then what I also can believe is that the, um, you have the ability to interact with the divinity in a way that it's revealed from within you of what the divinity has planned for you and in shaping you. So mm -hmm. anyway, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I think it, I think it gives people something to engage in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because again, asking lots of questions. I mean, there's lots of things there to be able to dig into. Mm -hmm. Do you know yourself? Yeah. Or have you tried to even control who you are? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So true. and not allowed. You know anything else to be able to speak to your identity except what you've controlled what you you want to project people to see you as yeah 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 i kn i know that for me that has been a peeling of the onion layer by layer um in in the move um and that that's why i'm able to say the move to chicagoland for me was definitely a a, a ch season of change mm -hmm. and um you know, and, and hey, folks, it, you may think we're non-planning idiots based on the opener, okay? You, you may really think we're non-planning idiots. But I think in this, here is an exercise of our conversation. But what Phil and I are passionate about isn't about running circles around a track. Mm -hmm. In in the real moment, our confession to you was we could not even tap into the drive that it would take. And what did we lay out for you today? We laid out for you what we would consider even a harder work than the physical disciplines to be an Olympian. Right. It's it's a it's a call to our society. Mm -hmm. Can can we move into a restoration? Mm -hmm. And how does that start? It it's grassroots. It starts in you. And you don't even have to be afraid, but you do have to be willing to do the work. Mm -hmm. And that's where I like how you wrap it all up with even the Olympian work. <laughs> right. I mean, right? Right. Isn't that beautiful? It is. Because, yeah, it, it's going to take work and it's going to take perseverance and it's going to take practice. <laughs> and the, the other thing is both you and I hmm. can engage at. That's the kind of thing that we can dive onto that energize us. You know, like that. Those are those are the things that would be like, oh, yeah, this is a daily part of life in right. in and with in what's going on you know mm -hmm. and so for as much as we uh put off as a bunch of hippie music listening <laughs> couch potatoes netflix <laughs> watching and all this stuff uh, i mean yeah. there there's there's things going on and the beauty of this conversation is mm. what i trust these aren't our thoughts right i trust that the christ that is in us mm has guided us in this conversation that it would end up making this perfect circle mm -hmm. is a sign of the community of us as two people mm -hmm. with the third the divine right it's beautiful <laughs> it is <laughs> and so, and 
it was perfectly orchestrated, just not by us. <laughs> right. Yeah. And and if you want to sit back, actually, we should put an asterisk on this because um, if if you get to the end of this podcast and you're like, how did that happen? That's the part of life that we're used to not planning. And we're okay with it. Oh, yeah. Yep. And if you don't like it, that's all right. We still love you because that's what we Uh are going to come to the table with. Yeah. We're going to release control in order to love. Yeah. There you go. (laughs) There you go. Hey, well, you know all of the end of the episode uh, tidbits. And, um, you know, I, I, I would just say, however you take in dialogue, uh, feel free order or order the book um, get get to doing some of that work uh, take a look at your life and see uh, where are there places of efficiency that can carve out more space in your day to be able to uh, grow um, personally uh, in these things reflection uh, there is peace and reflection meditation mm-hmm. and um, and if you don't believe it let us believe it for you that we trust in what is in you will be able to make itself available to you. And so, um, anyway, you got anything else, Phil? That's oh, good stuff. I think we're, we'll leave it there for, for everybody to continue to ponder. We're going to put all the links there for, for you to engage. Even if you're like, Oh, this stuff doesn't make sense to me. Or even if you're thinking that is completely different from what I do, believe engage with it it's good to be challenged challenged where you're at challenged to be able to move forward and uh, maybe even what it does is it helps strengthen what you believe now i mean so yeah do that engage in it spend time with it the other the other practice that would be a really cool thing and i i end up doing this all the time i'm like hey see you later everybody and by the way but um, when you were speaking, what came into my mind is I have moments that are catalyst moments, times in my life that I can point to and say, this is when this change, you know, occurred. Mm-hmm. And one of the catalyst moments for me heading down a path that has brought just an incredible appreciation for divinity is I looked around and recognized that I didn't want to serve a God that I could explain. Boom. And in that, it was in that that I was given eyes to be able to see. Doesn't mean that I could explain it all, but I could see beyond my explanations. Mm -hmm. And there's where peace set in. Mm -hmm. And it's there I could rest of faith and it's in that that but go back and go back go back and chronologically look at the catalysts lifetime changing things in your life write that stuff down we'd love to hear about it sure absolutely all right everybody all right this you one's... have a great wonderful day of exploration and identity seeking there you go <laughs> all right it's cool And gold medal to the bicyclist with the tire pump.